Time now for our series, Hack Your Happiness, Science-Based Ways to Live Smarter and Happier. This morning, we're talking gratitude. And this is not just about superficial gratitude, where you take a picture of your washboard abs and post it with a hashtag, <laughs> blessed. Instead, we're talking about the simple but profound practice of not taking the many, many good things in your life for granted. Look at what we found at one incredible school. Inside this junior high school in Schaumburg, Illinois, they're embracing the idea that happier kids and staff... What kind of things make you happy? ...make better learners and teachers. I like this exercise because there's no math in it. It's a year-round happiness curriculum where one of their key components is gratitude. I know what I'm grateful for. My pets. Three cats. In another class, students write letters to someone they're grateful for. 12-year-old Allie wrote to her grandfather to tell him how much she loves and appreciates him. How does it feel to write that? It just makes me excited. It just makes you feel all bubbly inside and <laughs> makes you smile. I see you're getting a little emotional. Yeah. Is it powerful to write all of this down? Yeah. How does it feel? Happy. Yeah, you feel happy? Yeah. 12-year-old Zach Miller sharing his letter with his dad. I want to be the person I am today without your help. Thank you. Thank you, Rob, that for me. Thanks, big guy. It's nice to know you appreciate me, bud. Your basic philosophy is it's not enough to teach these kids math. Right. and reading. We're going to teach them how, through this curriculum, how to be better people. And we really believe that's the most important thing that we do. The architect of this push for gratitude is Sean Acor, author of The Happiness Advantage, where he outlines how gratitude at any age can reduce stress and depression, boost productivity, and increase both optimism and social connection, two of the greatest predictors of long-term happiness. Why is gratitude something that we should be trying to operate in our lives. All of this research shows that we can create these happiness hygiene habits that if for just two minutes a day we got a kid to think of three things that they're grateful for or if we expressed our gratitude once over the course of the day to somebody else, your brain basically creates a background app taking some of your resources to scan all day long for the positive. So over the next few days, I tried it out. There were two assignments. First, every day I thought about three new things I was grateful for. Sometimes right before bed. What am I grateful for? Another time with my son, Alexander. You and mommy were away for a couple of days and you came back today, and I'm happy about that. I made a new friend today, and mommy and I had a delicious dinner. With me? Yeah, you didn't eat it. I also took time every day to write gooey emails to people I really felt deserved it. I'm actually sending to my meditation teacher who spent an hour and a half on the phone with me the other day in a really useful way. So I'm going to send him a thank you. We also recruited 13-year-old Chase Hampton from that school in Schaumburg to do the same. I'm thankful for video games, my cat, my teachers, Mr. Chris, our principal. He does a lot for me. It just makes you and your whole self feel happy. But one thing was still bothering me. There are many people who have really grave personal circumstances, illness, abuse within the family. Is it possible for those people to be grateful? Is this too much to ask for people in certain extreme circumstances? We've found levels of happiness at every single aspect of this world in every environment we've looked at so far from cancer wards to prisons to people that have been in combat zones. We can find meaning in the daily activities that can move us forward. I think happiness could remain an option um, wherever we live in the world. Okay, so here's something you can do at home. You can write things down and put them in a bowl or a jar. I brought down one of my one of the things uh, I'm grateful for. I wrote here, I'm grateful for my son Alexander, even though I'm pretty sure you like mommy better, and even though you told me the other day I'm, quote, smelly, I think you are the smartest, kindest, cutest human I know. Uh, Amy, what did you write? I said I was grateful for today. Beautiful. It's pretty simple, yeah, beautiful. but powerful. Yes, yeah. yes. In fact, mine's a two-parter, uh, family and tacos. <laughs> so we went, we went big and small. In what order? But family first. <laughs> okay. And if you can have both together, even better. Yes. Beautiful. I want, I want all of yours, but I put I'm grateful for my job because it really is a dream to sit here every single time I'm allowed to sit here. Family time last week and Christmas lights in New York City. It's just, it puts you in the spirit. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you.